Your Guarantee of Success, Part 2. This is the 365 Days of Multi-Level Marketing Journey to Freedom Podcast with Rome Bachelor, where Rome shares his daily journey from down and out to total financial freedom in one year, along with pro tips, tricks, strategies, and tools to help you join in on the journey. Now, here's Rome with today's Journey to Financial Freedom Podcast. So earlier on in the podcast episodes, we did your guarantee of success. I highly, highly, highly recommend referencing back to that one to get the complete story. They are both self-standing and complete in and of themselves, but they complement one, one another this episode today and that one very, very well. So you can get the full picture and really wrap a bow around everything your heart desires with these two different techniques and approaches. The first one may be slightly more powerful, but this one tends to uh, be more applicable in your everyday life and is uh, a little quicker to something you can use immediately right now uh, in the next few minutes. So with that, I'm going to kick this off with explaining how in the first episode we talked about how the mind thinks in pictures, the mind thinks in images. It does not think in statements, but the mind also thinks in evaluations or questions. The mind is always going unconsciously, sometimes consciously, but unconsciously around the clock, almost 24 seven, your mind is thinking, what does this mean? What am I going to do? How do I do this? Where do I need to be? How am I going to pay bills? How am I going to lose weight? Why? The sometimes why is so harmful. Why am I so fat? Why does this always happen to me? Why come I can't get this? Or why come I can't who do that? Right? So it depends on if you come from a positive programming or a negative programming, the type of questions you ask. But they're always questions and evaluations because you're always, the process of thinking is asking questions and seeking answers. In your own mind, in your own headspace, consciously and unconsciously, we're always asking ourselves questions and seeking the answers. That's the process of thought. We don't think primarily in statements. We actually think in evaluations and seek statements to answer our questions. And often we seek just validation of the questions we ask, validation. So what happens is when we're asking questions, our mind forms up images. These are usually unconscious and are such a quick flash, we don't even notice that images are uh, formed in the back in the background, so to speak. So you can ask, what do I do now? Or how do I do this now? And based on how you ask that question, or which way, the mind will form up a slightly different image. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'll say it again. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is just a sort of a biblical word for the default images you have in your mind. Faith is sort of the biblical word for the default images you have in the back of your mind. See, your subconscious mind, your unconscious mind, may be just a scientific word for your spirit man as is often used in Bible talk, your spirit man, right? So we are a spirit, we have a soul, we live in a body. We are a spirit, we have a soul, the soul being the mind and the emotions, we live in a body. But the unconscious mind may very well be synonymous with the spirit, whereas in the conscious mind may very well be synonymous with the part of the soul that thinks consciously. So without getting too deep, and some 
some may have, uh, you know, we are all taught things maybe a little differently, but in years and years and decades and decades and decades of study, these are my conclusions based on my research. So how do we use this information to benefit? Because whether or not it's the soul or the spirit or the mind doesn't really matter. Is how does it apply to my life? How do I use this technique or process to make a difference and change and help me achieve my dreams and goals, right? So here's how we do this. Since faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, we definitely want to program our default images to attract that which we are seeking in our life and not that which we do not choose in our life. We don't want to ever choose, never choose on purpose those things you do not want to attract. So faith comes by Faith comes by the programming we have. That can be done with our mouth, the things we say, but it's also by the default questions we ask ourselves, the evaluations going on all the time in our mind. So you can say, I choose to think of happy thoughts, and it's hard to force yourself to think faith-filled, happy dreams and goals, thoughts. But when you say, the right questions, it happens automatically. See, you can say these questions verbally and you can say them by writing them down. Either way, if, you're stu if you study scripture, they both have a similar Greek word, L-O-G-O-S, logos. Some say logos, logos. It is the same. It is the written word it is really the spoken word, but you can write it and it has a similar effect on your spirit or your unconscious mind. But when you write statements, it programs your mind in a very weak way. Statements program your images very ineffectively. Whereas in questions, if they're the right type, will program your default images very powerfully and quickly, much more quickly. So how do you do it? When you say why in a presuppos presupposing something's already true, you don't have to battle in your mind, is it true or not? Instead of saying, you know, I, I weigh, you know, whatever your ideal weight is. So for me, let's say, uh, I fill coliseums, I fill coliseums, my team fills coliseums, my team fills coliseums. And if I'm working hard at trying to convince myself the mind connects the dots that it must not be true because I'm working so hard to convince myself. If it was already true, why would I keep saying it that way? However, if you ask, why was I able to fill coliseums with a happy, productive, exciting downline so easily? Why am I the ideal, my ideal weight, right, specifically? Why did I attract my ideal life partner without trying? Why did it happen so automatically, so magnificently, so joyously, so, so ideally, so quickly? Why am I having the time of my life doing this podcast? Why are the right people coming into my life at the right time, place, and way? Why am I living in my ideal home, in my ideal neighborhood, with the ideal furniture that I've always wanted. I don't believe in saying perfect because there's nothing perfect this side of heaven. Ideal is a better word to choose because it's more realistic. There's no perfect, but there is ideal. There is ideal. So you can say, why did I reach my ideal weight so, so effortlessly? Why am I in the best shape of my life? Why, you know, did I attract the right leaders with the right system? And why did it just happen almost automatically? Why are the right leaders coming into my business every single day to help me achieve my ultimate dreams and goals? Why am I having so much fun in my business getting referrals? Why do I get referrals from every customer I have that lead to more business and more referrals from them. These are just some examples, but what you want to do is you want to get a notebook 
and you want to begin to write down a series of why questions in general. Why do you want to do that? Because you want to begin to reprogram your mind to thinking new default images in every area of your life. However, you want to have one predominant thing you're working on at a time that you are consistently emphasizing. Why? Because the mind will form up that image if that image is consistent and is backed with some emotion. If that image is consistent and is backed with some emotion because we send too many flaky mixed messages so the mind doesn't know which way to go. One of the reasons we don't attract what it is we want is we want too many um, mixed things, too many things that are are conflicting or not exactly lined up with one another. So we have to make a decision. What is the thought for sure that feels and sits right with us? You might write it down uh, 10 or 15 or 30 or 100 different ways until one question seems just sits right with you and then make that pre your predominant question. You know, why am I at my ideal income of blank per month? and achieved it so joyfully and so quickly, right? So it can be a life partner, it can be where you live, it can be getting referrals, it can be getting the list from the people you sponsor, it can be having a happy downline, it can be filling coliseums, it can be, you know, why have I found the right information so easily to help me achieve my goals and dreams? Whatever it is that you're seeking to do, I suggest work on one primary thing at a time until that is manifest. And what we have found, what I have found myself, as well as if you'll read Noah St. John, I want to reference him. He has a book called, actually has several books on the topic of why the why questions are better than the how questions. Because how is presupposing, it may be a productive question to ask, how can I do something? But what's even better in this topic is to ask, why is it already true? Because see, why is it already true doesn't question, doesn't, it automatically brings the image, an image of it already being true. See, even Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, if you believe you have received, you will have it. If you believe you will receive, you will have it. Mark 11, reference it, check it out. If you believe you will have received, you will have it. Why? Because if you have the default image that it's already true, it's going to come true. Because faith is the substance of hope for, uh, of things hoped for, the evidence, or in the Greek it says the title deed of things, of the thing, right, that you're hoping for. The actual title deed is the default image of it already being true. If you're thinking of it as if it's something you want to achieve, that's a slightly different image in the unconscious than one that is already true. If you want it to, be, if you want to attract, always trying to achieve it, then ask, then tr then presuppose it's not true yet, and you'll stay that way. But when you can change the default image to something like asking the question, "Why is it already true? Why has this happened for me?" Then you have an image that is one that will bring it into manifestation. You're having an image of faith that will bring it and make it a reality sooner or later. And what I have seen is sometimes it takes two weeks, sometimes two months, but somewhere between two weeks and two months, often a shift happens. Two weeks to two months, depending on the energy you put behind it, how often you do it throughout the day, when you wake up and you go to bed, I suggest writing it down in places you'll see your key question, a series of questions, maybe in a notebook on your computer or on your phone, would be helpful. And always add to your productive, positive, life-transforming why questions. But focus on one topic. Make that the predominant subject. You could say, why, let's say you want to attract a new home. Why did my new home come to me so effortlessly? Why did my ideal new home show up in my life without any effort? Why did my ideal home show up in the right, in the ideal area for me? Why did my ideal home show up 
with my ideal furniture already in it, right? I'm just giving the examples. You can give different why questions around the same outcome that you're wanting to have happen in your life, but yet it's a series of why questions around one topic, but you're painting a fuller image when you surround it with peripheral um, statements, I mean, questions that are already true with why. So Noah St. John has a book called Affirmations, Affirmations. Now affirmations, not an I in the middle, but an O, Affirmations. And I highly recommend that book because it goes into this process at length. Bart Baggett has one on asking how questions, and that's good. But the upgrade is why. That's an upgrade that's actually more powerful and, and more productive when you ask it correctly. So to supplement the picture you drew in day and in, in the first your guarantee of success episode, add the why questions as if it's already true. I will be glad to answer any questions because I'm not quite sure how this episode came out, if it came out exactly like I wanted. However, just know that we are programming yourself for success or failure. See, negative people always say, why does this always happen to me? And guess what happens? It always happens to them. But successful people go in with an air of expectancy that good things are going to happen. And guess what usually happens? It usually happens. But how is that true? What makes that true is just simply the default image in the back of their mind as to what causes their expectation. What, what's their fate? Where is their faith landed on? What's the title deed they have created in their spirit man, in their unconscious mind? What is the default image they carry around? And guess what? I don't care what it is. You can reprogram it with consistent by choice effort by writing down and saying aloud often throughout the day, reading it silently, but reading it aloud some, because the tongue has power to program the mind's images. The tongue has power. The spoken word has power to reprogram your faith. And then the su faith will become the substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen yet, but they will come. So write it down, and then here's a great one. If you want it to come faster, find a song or music that absolutely motivates you with strong, positive, deep emotion. Get in your car, get in a room by yourself, blast that song. Once you get your right why statement, the one or two that really, really resonate with you and on the same subject and read it out loud with conviction over and over and over, asking the why is it already true question during the whole length of the song and do that quite often. And it'll manifest quicker because that image will be so powerfully programmed, the manifestation will come sooner. So not only do you want to draw your image uh, as you consciously know it to be, but you also want to reprogram your mind with the right why questions and catch yourself when you're having negative stinking thinking, they call it. Because all that is, is your default why questions, your default image is working against you rather than working for you. You want your words, your thoughts, your, your default image to be aligned with who you're choosing your life to be and what the Word of God says it should be. That's behavior, that's results, that's prosperity, health, peace, and that is enough prosperity to bless everyone you're around as you should do both with your words and with your actions and your time because you bought your life back see you might work on a relationship you might work on a health crisis you might work on your weight you might work on your finances you might work on your career but i yet at the same time i believe that if you focus on the one what's the one area that if you change it now will impact the most of your life with one move I think that's a good place to start, and that might be your residual income or your team building efforts. Because if you have financial abundance through network marketing that's not based on your ability to perform, because things happen, accidents happen, life happens, cancel clear, we don't want any, we want good things to happen. By the way, when you say something negative, you can say cancel clear, and that's a way to negate it and wash it away and then make a positive statement. So, or ask a positive 
why I question, right? Statements do carry weight, but questions, the right questions carry even much more weight, just to clarify. So with that, that's today's podcast episode, Your Guarantee of Success Part 2, reprogramming yourself, reprogramming your faith so that the, the, the things hoped for will actually manifest in your life and how to tell what you're going to bring because of what you're asking by default now by a habit, a pattern you've created, but you can recreate it by choice. That's today's episode. Thank you for listening. I absolutely adore everybody that's listening. I appreciate you for listening because I'm doing this to contribute. I'm doing this not only to contribute, but also to grow so I can contribute even more. And I appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and join us in this journey. Until next episode, this was Day 37 and Rome Bachelor. Thank you for joining me in the journey. Thank you for sharing today's 365 Days of MLM to Freedom podcast. And remember to email your questions and comments directly to Rome at 365 days of MLM at gmail.com. And until next time, we want to encourage you to join in on the journey.